to uh, invite Father Travis to come up, and I will say a short prayer for him. Some of you might be wondering, why, why invite somebody who isn't part of the congregation to share? Because we don't normally do this. Normally, we have somebody from our congregation itself share. And the reason is, is that we share the building with St. Faith Anglican, and uh, Father Travis is the priest of St. Faith Anglican. And uh, part of this whole idea of being in this building is this concept of what we call lodgepole communitas. So the idea of uh, the exploration of everything that happens in this building is to honor and praise God and is to reach out and uh, touch people so that all people who walk in this building will experience the love of Jesus and will be able to flourish and grow and experience his peace and his shalom. And that is the overarching idea of being in this building and uh, the two congregations desire to do this together and to work together. And part of that is to get to know each other. And so this is a way for us to get to know Father Travis and uh, to start building those connections, which has been hard to do during COVID. So um, I'm just going to pray for you briefly. Lord Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity to hear from Father Travis. Pray, Lord, that you will bless, bless him at this time, grant him peace as he speaks, and grant him the words that you would have him share to us. And I pray that our hearts and our minds and our spirits will be open to what you have to say through Father Travis this morning. Pray this in your name. Amen. Are we good? I got two technologies in my hand and I don't know what either do with you. So, and I'm also chaotic. If you meet me, if you meet me, spend 10 minutes with me, you get a lot. <laughs> so, this 15 minutes roller coaster is going to be fun for you all. Um, so, I'm going to start in the middle of my story um, because I went to seminary and I had a horrible first year. There was controversy around same-sex blessings and church decline and everybody was angry and I was like, I just found Jesus. I love him. This is what I want to do. And everyone was like, ah! I was like, oh. So... In one of my classes, I met this um, Jesuit. And the Jesuits are part of the Ignatian way of thinking. The current pope is a Jesuit. And the, the Jesuits are really, really focused on outreach and study and prayer. That's their mojo. They have this thing called living in your consolations and your desolations. Knowing the fullness of your life as it's laid out before you, but lensing it not with your perspective on your life, but where is God active every moment, even in the crud that you're feeling that particular day, even in that joy when you think, yeah, I won the Super Bowl. Well, that's happened later. But um, even then, those high moments where we take credit for or those low moments where we beat ourselves up with, God says, hmm, step back. And the Ignatian exercises allows us to do that. So I was feeling massive, massive, massive desolation first year of university because the year before, I was filled with consolations. Filled with consolations. So there was this man who I visited with Ignatian. He must have been 3,000 years old. He was Yoda, like honestly. Like, he was wrinkly and and he moved really slowly. And I'm sure he was really quick, really. But he did that, and he sat me down, and I'm like, help me out, help me out, help me out. And he goes, find something 
that calms you. That was just it. Be on your way, son. Find something that calms me. So there, I'm going to leave you with that. Find something that calms you. Because there are three moments in my life which I want to talk about specifically, but I want to frame it in a piece of scripture. And this is from the lections from today. And I'll read it. If I can get my phone to work. Jesus came down with them and stood on on a level ground with a great crowd of his disciples and a multitude of people from all Judah, Jerusalem, and the coast of Tyre and Sidon. They came to hear him and to be healed of their disease. They came to hear him and be healed of his diseases. And those who were troubled with unclean spirits were cured. And all in the crowd were trying to touch him, for the power came out of him and healed them all. Heal them all. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when you are excluded, revile you and defame you on the count of of being accounted the son of man. Rejoice in that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven. For that which your ancestors did for the prophets. Ah. Woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will weep and mourn. O to you who speak will of you, for it is the ancestors who did the false prophets. So I was um, uh, chaotic my whole entire life. Um, I went to university in my um, early part of my career in university. My grandmother died. And I was not a faithful person. My mother, if you ever meet her, was incredibly faithful. She loved Jesus. My mom went to Indian residential school, had her ass whipped, pardon my French, or no, 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 pardon my vulgarity, um, but literally, but came out of that loving Jesus. That woman was faithful. I was not. I had faith. I had faith in myself, fully, faith in myself. So I went to university. I'm going to crush university. I'm going to do this. I'm going to ah, 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 ah. And then my grandmother died. My grandmother was critical to my existence. And as a Cree person, your grandparents are really the essence of who you are taught by. And my grandmother was as faithful as my mom, but as tender, oh my God, and as soft as. And she died, and I watched her die. But I had this economics exam. I wanted to kill it. I wanted to crush it. And I was angry. And I did it. And my grandfather um, waited for me so so we can drive back to our reserve. And I was angry with him. I was angry with everybody. And then I, before he picked me up, I said, told him, I walked across the, 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 the high-level bridge from the university to the, high, to the legislative grounds. And I sat there. And I said, God, prove to me right now that you are full of love. And I was dripping with anger and acid. Dripping with it. God prove to me right now. I am waiting. I am waiting. Wind pushed just a minute. My anger forced me down. I sat in the chair. Tear dropped for my grandmother. And I could hear her love and her compassion overwhelm me. I can hear her enter into my spirit and fill 
this ungrateful, young, horrible creature and showed a different light. Showed that God is love and ripped me open to the capacities which were more than I can ever imagine. So God entered into the angerness of who I was and ripped me open. That's not enough. That's not enough because I was not a happy person. Right? I was unfulfilled. So I finished university, killed it. Went on to work for Revenue Canada, killed it. Went on to do, open my own business, killed it. Just rocked everything. Superstar. Like, man, this guy is super. But then, you know, that lingering hook of God was in me. That lingering hook. And this nagging, be tender, be loving, know your grandmother. So then I was killing it, you know, living life hard. I was a hair, it was in hairdressing. So nothing against my fellow hairdressers in the world, but that's a tough job. You get a lot of emotive energy thrown at you. You get a lot of people's story thrown at you. And you have to hold it, right? So I was holding this bag of junk, and I was, and I was babying it. Like it, was just, it was like a cuddled, it made me feel good. And I was the emperor of my own domain. I was the emperor of my own domain. But in the midst of it, it was not really satisfied. Then I made a deal with my mother. My, and I was into triathlon at that time and killing it, you know. And, and my mom said, you have to drive me to church. And I love my mother just enough to make, to make her, you know, do it. So I said, okay. But I get to go work out and I'll pick you up. No, you have to come to church one Sunday. I said, hmm, one Sunday. I can pull that off. And I was, let me tell you, there's critics in every church, in every pew, in everything that just maligns Jesus. Let me tell you, I sat in that back row maligning Jesus like no one business. Mm -mm. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. You know, I did that. But then the word blessed hooked me. Blessed are the poor. Blessed are you. Blessed are those who suffer. And I start, oh no, I'm suffering. And then that, that little note of Jesus got in again. That love popped in. The memory of my grandmother, the memory of me telling God popped in again and exploded inside of me. It says, oh no. Is happening. God has entered, and I want it out. And then Easter came up, and this priest told, told a sermon, talked a sermon about his Alzheimer's, his, the faith of this woman who had Alzheimer's. And that crushed me in such a beautiful way. And I went, I went out the next weekend after that sermon, and I got annihilated drunk. Like, I was so trying to get rid of God inside of me. I was going to do anything, anything to get rid of him. So I went out and got annihilatedly drunk. I was at this pub, and I was like, uh, 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 uh. And nothing. Felt nothing. No joy. Nothing from the usual things that I get from being emperor of my own life. So I, went, I left. And I left it, and I walked towards uh, a flat that I was living in in Edmonton, and I uh, met two people crossing me. And they came, and they said, oh, you faggot. And I said something equally not generous. And they crossed ways. 
And I just did one of these look back, looks back, and I thought, oh, they're going to kick me hard. So I did my best, you know, bionic man move, thinking, but I was annihilated and drunk. So I wasn't really moving very fast. So he came up behind me, and he kicked me. And he cracked me right, in, right here. And my face went down, and I hit a railway tie. And my face was cracked open. And a little bit of blood was pouring over my face. I didn't know that at the time. Right? So I got home. And the apartment I was staying in was white. Like white sheets, white carpet, white everything. I had white duvet. Right? And my face was cruddy blood. And my face was down. Right? Woe to you who have so much. Woe to you. On the way back, I was staggering and whatever, and people were crossing the way, this side and this side. I was, I was walking drunk, bleeding, looking like an Indian, looking drunken, looking beaten, looking all that is defiled and vile in the world. Drunk, held a tree, and I've never prayed so hard. Save me, Lord. Save me. I held that tree. The blood fell. But also, a bit of me died. The worst of me died. The part that was unloving died. The part that was selfish died. The part that said, it's only about me died. So I went up and I saw the next day and I had a massive lesion. You can still see the scar on my face. If you want to come look at it. Went to seminary. So I had to find something that made me look back at those moments, those times. What calmed me now in there? It was the love of God that calmed me, right? Even though I thought I was killing it, I was killing myself. Even though that I had no blessing, I was all full of woe, full of woe, full of woe, full of woe. So then I had to change it. I had to change it in the seminary. So I went there, and there was this, this priest in the local, this parish in Yorkville was posh. Like, they had some money. So they said... Oh, Travis, you can do something. I want to cut homeless people's hair, right? I want to take something that I was really good at and turn it from killing it to bringing life. I want to do something I was killing and bringing life. And then there was this people who came in for two years. I did it. It was the best part of ministry. I'll be honest. You, you go to seminary, Alleluia. You'll learn some stuff. What you will learn is God is in the streets, God is in people. God is in life. Karl Barth said, you simply cannot have theology without doxy, without actually practicing it. You actually have to believe and practice what you believe. You can't just come to church on a Sunday and be an ass the rest of the week. You can't come and do five, five cents of work and then give hundreds of million dollars for your own self-care. You can't. And that's what I learned in seminary. I cleaned this man's hair, this old man, and he gave me a toonie as payment. Right? He came every week and we talked. And some of these people have never been touched, probably in 10 years, have never been touched because they're homeless and drunken and broken and lost and devastated. So they came in and I just saw them. What's your name, my friend? Yeah, your name? Tavis. Huh? Tavis. Tavis? Tavis. Tavis. And your name? Sebastian. And your name? Sebastian. Your name? Josh. Your name? Josh. Your name? Josh. Yours? Josh. Yours? Josh. Yours who is weeping? Fran. Fran. That's faith. That's what I learned most in my relationship with Jesus. You got to let people know. You've got to be in relationship with people, right? 
be in profound relation, look them in the eyes and say, whoa, and blessings, consolations, you know, and desolations. So that's a funny story. You're not going to get anything more than me. If you ever meet me, that's what you get. You get a series of stories of life. So my hope for this journey of St. Face and Avenue is that we'll know each other's names because Jesus knows our name first. Jesus knows that consolation and that desolation, even if you do not know it. Jesus enters into our story, gives us comfort, makes us celebrate, even if we do not want it. Even if we think we're living in our woes, even if we think we have to hold on to them, God will find a way to get in there and love you. Get in there and love you. So I'm not too sure if I shared enough or shared too little or too much, but that thing I want to leave you with, even in the midst of your consolation or your desolation, find where God is asking you to be calm in it, where God is asking you to be motivated by it, where God is asking you to be inspired to be in love with other people in it. Because it's good that you love yourself. The whole society says that. Love yourself. Hallelujah. Do. But you have to love others. We are designed to love others. So that's the end of my story. This is my favorite song. I love this 